This program contains graphic descriptions and imagery of the consequences of war. Viewer discretion is advised. How old are you? Eleven years. Have you ever shot anybody? Yes. Tell me. Two. Two people you shot? Two person shot. It's an escalating crisis. The spread of child soldiers around the globe in the last 10 years has been like a virus. Kids robbed of their childhood. In order for you to actually turn a child into a killer, you have to destroy what they know. And forced into wars. No matter what a child does in combat, there's always a part of them that doesn't want to let go of the childhood that they lose every single day. Like most new soldiers, Ishmael Beya is anxious. I have never been so afraid to go anywhere in my life as I was. You know, we were shaking. His first combat encounter is just moments away. We basically made an ambush near a swamp and waited for the other group to come. On a typically humid day in Sierra Leone, fear freezes him. And then they came. And there was an exchange of fire between the groups. And I remember lying there, I could not pull the trigger because I was so numb by what I was seeing, everything that was happening, the bullets flying all over the place. There was so much blood, you know, and people being shot and killed on both sides. Just that sight of the blood made something shift inside me that I started pulling the trigger. In rapid fire, Ishmael cuts down several enemy soldiers. I think I realized that if I didn't shoot, that I would get killed. When the guns fall silent, he finds many of those he killed are only teenagers. They are just like him. Ishmael Beya is 13 years old. I was very aware that I was becoming something that I hadn't been before. <laughs> Regrettably, Ishmael's story is not uncommon. Every day, there are children, boys and girls, fighting in these horrible conditions, being forced to do unthinkable acts. There's a line from a poem, childhood is the kingdom where no one dies. But yet every day, kids see death around them, and they commit acts leading to death. And so their childhoods end right at that moment. There are hundreds of thousands of children being used as soldiers in nearly every region of the world. It's prevalent in at least 20 armed conflicts worldwide today. Three out of every four wars, 75% of the wars out there today have children fighting in them. By most counts, there's over 300,000 children who are serving as combatants right now. When you crunch the numbers, that means roughly one out of every 10 people who are fighting in a war right now is a child. A child soldier is defined as anyone under the age of 18 serving in a military capacity. They can fight on behalf of a governmental or non-governmental group. They can carry a weapon or not. It's taken to mean any child who's serving in war, either by force or has been recruited through other means. In some conflicts, second and third graders are drawn into the fight. But whether seven or 17, boy or girl, the horrors child soldiers face are extreme. For the boys and the girls, there's the trauma of seeing people killed around you being at risk of dying yourself and being forced to kill others, sometimes family members, friends, uh, colleagues or schoolmates you've known your entire life. For the girls, there's a double trauma. They not only fight in the daytime and serve like the boys at the whim of their adult commanders, but they're also taken as sexual servants, as the quote-unquote wives of adult commanders, gang raped at will. On the battlefield, kids are often force-fed drugs, indoctrinated, and trained to kill. 
In the beginning of the war, you know, a lot of things were difficult to see. Seeing bodies on paths, seeing people being killed in front of me. But as time went on, with the drugs and the trauma, with the constant rhetoric, this world became your reality. Killing somebody or stabbing somebody by it and watching that done was not a big deal anymore. It became very simple. It became as easy as drinking water or doing anything. Disturbing dreams, hallucinations, and flashbacks often haunt those who survive. There were a lot of moments where I went to the tap water to take a shower, to wash your hands, and all I saw was blood coming out of the tap. And I have to look at it for a while before it became water. The damage inflicted extends far beyond individual traumatized children. It's not just a crime, but it's a crime that matters. It's a crime that's making the world less safe. It's a crime that's making more wars happen, more failed states happen, which makes more terrorism happen. And so we better care about it because it's gonna continue on and it's gonna get worse and it's gonna cause more of these bigger consequences. The extensive use of children as combatants is a relatively modern phenomenon. In history, you had examples of kids fighting, but they were footnotes. They weren't in large numbers, and they typically weren't in combatant roles. But in the mid to late 20th century, several factors pushed children to the front lines. Weakened and failed states cause entire populations to be disenfranchised. You have this massive prosperity in the world, but at the same time, massive levels of poverty, disease, refugees, you name it. You got 40 million kids that have lost either one or both of their parents to AIDS. And so you have this new pool of disconnected children, a new pool of potential combatants. In debilitated regions across the world, the nature of warfare changes. A hundred years ago, war was most commonly between two governments fighting between two states, whereas today conflicts are more likely to be within countries where the dividing line between civilians and combatants is no longer so clear and entire neighborhoods become war zones. We're seeing a melding of warrior and civilian and it's just pure chaos and groups that are unpopular seeing children as a way to go out and gain power and engage in this new kind of warfare. Technological advances in weaponry make this possible. Small arms are lighter and easier to use. A thriving global arms trade makes these weapons easily accessible and affordable. The proliferation of small arms around the world has meant that in many countries you can buy a AK-47 for as little money as it would take to buy a textbook for school. With so many factors aligned, by the 1990s, the world is witness to an epidemic of children exploited as combatants. One of them is Ishmael Bea, a teenage recruit in Sierra Leone's government army. We didn't think that the military would really do that to kids, because at that age, we were so young. You know, I was 13, most of the kids were like 12, you know, 11, 7. When war descends upon his country in 1991, it's the beginning of an odyssey that transforms an innocent boy into a ruthless killer. The process of turning children into warriors is far from difficult. In order for you to actually turn a child into a soldier, into a killer, you have to destroy what they know, and then that's where they belong to you. Ishmael Bea is just 12 years old when war invades his village. It's 1993, and Sierra Leone is in the early stages of a brutal civil war. While Ishmael and several friends play in the bush, rebels attack. Ishmael's parents are viciously killed. I felt like it would have been easier to die with them rather than to 
feel what I was feeling at that moment. It was very difficult. I was really angry and I was hurt to a point that I've never felt before. Ishmael and his friends flee into the jungle where they hide for almost a year. We saw, you know, mothers carrying their dead babies behind their backs, fathers carrying their sons. You know, the, this landscape we had known as children changed quite quickly and there were a lot of dead bodies littered all over the place. For many young people in war, becoming a child soldier is not the beginning of their trauma. Maybe they've lost a relative to violence. Maybe someone in the family has disappeared. Maybe they've been displaced by a particular group or by fighting. Ishmael finds refuge in a village controlled by the government army. But his nightmare is far from over. A lot of people think that it's only rebel groups or warlords that use child soldiers, but it's also states. Governments have also pulled kids in. Such states often describe their conscription of children as voluntary recruitment. We have to be very careful about our use of the term voluntary uh, recruitment because children's decisions to join are nearly always guided by desperation, hardship, because it's their only meal, it's their only chance of security and protection. In Sierra Leone's war, all sides recruit children as combatants. As rebels close in on the village where Ishmael has found protection, a government army general makes clear the boys there have few options. They basically say, you know, we need any able body to do whatever they can to fight this war, and we're gonna make sure that that happens so no one could really live. The general uses rebel atrocities to his advantage. Talked about people being raped, families being killed, and things that were very specific that uh, made people angry. An organization can come to a child and say, this is your chance to strike back at them, to make them suffer what they've done, to make them pay. To a child, this appeal is very powerful, it's very cogent, it's very simplistic. If you give me the gun, I can go out and find the person who killed my brother, my father, my sister. Across the globe, government forces are not alone in using oppression as a way to induce children into their ranks. The government may not be respecting democratic principles, it may be cracking down on dissidents, it may be carrying out massive abuses against local villagers. And if children see their parents, their sisters, their brothers, their communities being subject to human rights abuses by the government, that's often a motivation to join a rebel force because they want revenge or they want to fight for a better country. Not all children become fighters in a so-called voluntary fashion. In many countries, child abductions are common among rebel groups and insurgent armies. They'll go into villages, they'll burn them down, line up the kids, say you're gonna join us or we're gonna kill you or we're gonna kill your brother. So the very act of creating the army is an atrocity. It's estimated that one-third of all child soldiers are forced into servitude. In 2007, one of the world's worst offenders is Uganda's fanatical Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA. In the last 20 years, the guerrilla group has abducted more than 25,000 children. The typical scenario for kidnapping usually involves a mass abduction the Lord's Resistance Army will go to a school or a church and take 20, 30, 60 kids in, in one swoop. Children abducted into the Lord's Resistance Army are often told that they have to literally beat or hack to death other children who have tried to escape. Sometimes they are forced to kill children that they know, children from their village. 